Hello, UCAR. Peter Christensen here, coming to you from the CEO's desk. It's kind of a temporary desk. We're remodeling, so this will be my temporary desk for the next few months. But uh, information is still golden, so don't you worry. Had this question the other day asking, when should we use the personal property transfer agreement versus just filling in items that will transfer with the sale in the Repsy? Good question. Good question. And there, there's no right answer. You can use either method that you find useful. So a couple tips, you know, if it's a rusty old lawnmower or trampoline, maybe that's a, a good one for the, the blank in the Repsy to just fill in. Uh, if it's more robust, where I do see the personal property transfer agreement being very helpful is if you had, say, a uh, list. So uh, the dining room set, the entire condo is furnished, the um, bedroom set. Well, what all is included in that? So you're, you're selling a fully furnished condo. Do you mean literally everything in there? Your family pictures, that artwork from Costa Rica that you picked up, whatever the case may be, uh, what's the assumption? Let's not leave it to uh, people's guesswork of buyer thinks, you know, the artwork, whatever, staying, family photos are staying, and the seller does not and then they get in a disagreement when the buyer takes possession. So don't leave it to that. If it's if it's a kind of a category of all furnishings, all bedroom furnishings, that's a good time to maybe list it out. You can attach, attach pictures to that thing, to the personal property transfer agreement to clarify, kind of go through. That's, that's one important uh, time to use that, I, I would think. And maybe just more complicated items that maybe have a higher potential dollar value. Just want to clarify, like this is what's being included. I like the language in that form saying, we're not, we're not assuming we know what this is actually worth if we went and sold this tomorrow. So we are assigning our own value to it or no value to it, whatever the case may be. There's nice language for that in the personal property transfer agreement, whereas uh, in the Repsy, it's just part of the Repsy. So it's just we're leaving these things. So those are two. Uh, but like I say, if you want to include the the trampoline and the tough shed and you want to do a, the per personal property transfer agreement, then great. Do it. Use it. That it, it still works even for tiny items, a small list of items. It can still be useful for that. But uh, you also do still have that line in the Repsy that can be used, and you can write out a few things in there as well. So I don't know if that helps a lot, but the more, the bigger the list or the more complicated if it's a category, I, I would personally want to use the personal property transfer agreement just because I want to clarify. That's what I want always in these contracts is clarity. I don't want to leave anything ambiguous because that's where we end up in disagreements and misunderstandings and agents buying things at closing for their, for their uh, clients. So I'll leave it at that. Remember, this is not legal advice. This is legal information only. If you need specific legal advice, please contact your attorney.